due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. You're listening to Two Strangers, One Podcast. Now, here's Chris. Hello, and welcome to Two Strangers, One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Lala. I'm Lala. That's, uh, this is, I'm finally, after 137 episodes, this is my best interview ever. I'm interviewing my mother. Uh, it's because you're visiting me right now. We're, we're upstate Rochester, New York. So you're, you're six hours away from home, mm-hmm. six hours away from not where you were born and raised, but well, no, you were you were born in, you you were born in Puerto Rico. Yes, I was born in Puerto Rico. I and came from PR when I was four years old. You came from PR. So do you know what town? What town you and Grandpa? And I and I juntas. I juntas. And because um, I remember you were telling me a story about that even at, at four years old that you were working at a farm. Yeah, they used to make us pick the eggs. They used to make us, you know, clean around. At four years old. At four years old, take the cows, try to milk the cow. And it was, because you remember, I, I, you were telling me a story that like, what, you didn't have shoes or you didn't have boots or, or they used to pull your hair because the, the older sisters had boots or something like that or. No, they were mean to us because they were cousins, you know, and they thought that we were the maids. So you, it was a cousin's farm. Yeah, it was my mother's cousin. So her daughters would pull our hair because we had very long hair, and they would tell us, you know, we don't belong there, and they would make us do the worst things. And what they were like, like spoiled brats, is that was? Oh, yeah, was spoiled brats. And so what? Because when you at this time, when you were four years old, because you were born in 1947. Uh huh. So at four years old, we're talking 51. So that was you were still in Puerto Rico because Grandpa Grandpa was in World War Two. Yes. Was it the, was it the Army or the Marines? I, I he was know. in the Army. He was in the Army, and um, so you said that when he left the Marines, he was a school teacher. When he left the Army. I mean, he, when he left the Army. He was a school teacher. But there was no money to be made in Puerto Rico. No, he was a history teacher, but he wanted more. Okay, and so. Um, and what did what did when when do you know what grandma did when you were still in Puerto Rico? Housewife taking care of uh, because she came to to New York with four kids, three and one in her belly. Okay, and it was um, now let's see because you had all together, including the ones that have passed, all the, all the brothers and sisters. Or so, like eleven. Eleven. Mm-hmm. Want to go through the names just? Uh, well, and my sisters have a leaders. My brother Jose is Jose Miguel. Mm-hmm. Georgie is Miguel Angel. Mm-hmm. Tony's a, a Jamon Antonio. Lourdes Milagro. Titi Lourdes. Spanish. You know, people in Spanish they say Titi. Uh-huh. Okay, Titi Lourdes. Milagro. Ernesto uh, and uh, Nelson Lewis, because I can't say it in Spanish. Mm-hmm. And Adalberto Baez. No, That's the baby. The Baez. So, but when you said Nelson, there was actually two Nelsons. There was uh, two Nelsons because we moved into the... You were living in a tenement. Yeah, we were living in a tenement. And my mother just had the baby. The baby was 27 years old. 27, 27 days. days old. And my mother bathed the baby, fed the baby. She went to the kitchen to start cooking. And when she heard a noise, the whole ceiling was on top of the crib, and I slapped my little brother, killed my little brother. Now, did you guys live, was it the top floor? Was it the second floor? We, was we it, live on the third floor. And that was the top floor? Yeah, the ceiling. The whole the, the, so the roof of the, the roof of the whole... Yeah, of the room fell. Oh, okay. So there was, right, so, I mean, I'm just asking, like, if it was, like, if there, because if there were people upstairs, then it would have been yeah. their floor. And I, mean, I never forget the address, 611 East 11th Street. 
So when you came straight from Puerto Rico, you and Grandpa and the whole family went to the Lower East Side? Yes, to a one and a half room. A one and a half room with, they had, with two they, parents, four kids. No, no. Um, my mother already had four with her and my sister and myself. It was six. Six altogether? Yeah. And so, but you said, you were telling me a story that 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 when they moved you from, like a, not a settlement, because that wasn't the case. It was no said. settlement. It was my father hit the Bellevue Hospital. My mother didn't speak a word of English. My uncle was the super. So the only thing that they did was move us to the projects, the Baruch projects. The Baruch project, which is also, which is also, and still is on the Lower East Side. Oh, still on the Lower East Side. <laughs> Now, where where'd you go to school? I went to um, elementary school. I went to um, PS 12. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Madison Street on high school. It was junior high school 22. Is it, that's the one that's still there, right? That and now the it's, is still now there. it's like a home or something. Mm -hmm. Then after I gra oh, and then when I graduated from that, I went to high school of fashion industry. I took fashion design. Was it FIT, Fashion Institute of Technology, or is that no fashion industry? Industry, okay. And I did a lot of. They told me that I was better making shoes. <laughs> yeah. So. So you were making shoes? Yeah, designs. Yeah, leather shoes. Yeah. Now, when you when you when you came over to when you came over from Puerto Rico, what did what was Grandpa doing when you? Grandpa was a baker. Mm -hmm. He used to work in F I N K Bakery, still around. You think? Mm hmm. Okay. Was that was it? Is Jewish? It was run because the yeah, Lower Side at that time was. Uh, yeah, was very it was Jewish. run Jewish. Yes, and do that. Grandpa was, you know, he used to do everything there. He fell and broke his back. So uh -huh. then he had a fight for his military pension. Mm -hmm. It took a long time, so he did everything that you could name of. He worked as a stock boy. He worked in a funeral parlor. He did everything. And when he was so, and then Grandma stood home and, and Grandma had to take care of the kids. It was a lot of kids. And when you went to the Baruch, was it a how many bedrooms were in the Baruch in the Baruch project? It was um, five and a half rooms. Oh, okay. yeah. I always get the I always get the math wrong. Five and a half rooms. Uh, that's how many bedrooms? Three. Three bedrooms and eleven or ten people. Yeah. <laughs> um, Nine, ten, eleven. Well, my so, father, you know, my brothers slept together, and the girls slept together, and then my parents had their own room with the baby's crib, you know. Mm. So at 47, by the time, you know, when you grew up, like, in your, your teenage years and your early 20s was, like, in the 60s. Or the 60s in the 60s, and early 70s. they had the, the hippies. I used to love to go to the village. Uh -huh. I used to love to go to the village, and did, did that, I took shoe design, I used to make sandals in the village with this professional guy. Mm -hmm. And I used to make a couple of dollars. They didn't pay me that much, but he taught me a lot of things. Now, like, you were making the sandals? Like, yeah, they, we, like, we would like, cut the leather. leather. We would cut the leather. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and make the, uh, the, the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then we would put the leather in the top. And with this machine, we would sew. The big sewing machine. Big giant factory machine. No one ever got hurt? <laughs> no, I never got hurt. I did, he said I did pretty good. So at that time with all the hippies, you were selling a lot of sandals? A or? lot of sandals. <laughs> Everybody was buying And they were, you know, original, real, you know, to the T. And I know you used to, you like, you used to like listening, well, you still like listening to like Motown and, and the classic, is it, is there like a movie, is there, is there, is there a movie that captures, like, is there, any, is there any movie that you've seen that it's like, that's exactly how it was, that's, you know, was... And these movies and these days? Yeah, like, uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, if you see a movie now that's supposed to be, oh, this is supposed to be the late 60s, early 70s, that you see and go, oh, my God, that's just like growing up. Yeah, I've seen a lot of movies. But you can't think of, you don't know, I mean, the you name. don't really remember the names of movies. The you just... But the movie that I used to love the most when I was a teenager, that we used to go see a lot, was Where the Boys Are. Where the Boys Are. What's With what? Connie, Connie, St uh, Connie Francis. Where she the Boys to... Are. I don't, I've never seen that. Yeah, What's it she about? She was uh, singing, and the guy, you know, she's after this guy uh -huh. and it's a real it's a love story mm. it's a beautiful she sings beautiful now what about what about and, West High and that oh. and that from the musketeers oh and the funicello yeah she made a lot of movies and we watched those i don't remember did you go to the actual theater or did you go like we did went, you did you go to the movie theater or was this watched on tv no or? no we went to there's a theater it was a theater in grand street and we used to pay like a dollar in a bag of popcorns. The Essex 
Essex Street Theater? Essex Street Theater. Oh, wow. Okay. We used to, pay, we used to go at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, and we used to get a little bag of popcorn and the, and the movie. And or a, a dollar. A dollar each. A dollar each. Wow. Okay. Because right, I thought I thought it would be, like, cheaper. I thought it would be, like... A, no, because, you know... And, and, and I remember you used to tell me about the uh, the pickle for a nickel. Uh, yeah. We used to get pickles with my brother... <laughs> We used to borrow a lot of pickles and a lot of matzo balls <laughs> and a lot of... You said borrow. What do you mean borrow? Maybe we should take it. <laughs> uh, and the matzos, the, the matzos. Yeah, just they the matzos, had, they had the, the, the matzo ball. Yeah, the factory. They had the factory on Rivington Street. The, the strikes matzos. Yeah, but the man would say take one because they had the little machine going and it was, you know, and they were nice and hot. And beautiful. But you would, what? Because I was it. Was it like a window that people used to take it, or, or that you could walk right in? No, no, no. They had like a little window, mm-hmm. and everybody knew when you when the machine passed. My brother was good on grabbing the the matzahs. The matzah, the matzo. The unleavened, unleavened bread. Yeah. Because the stripes and stripes are still there, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um. So with the with the with the, I mean, there was a lot of music, and everyone was a hippie, and people were protesting the war. Yeah. And, Mm-hmm. So it, it, because I think you told me that you you went down to Washington. Yes, you, to March. Yeah, you went to March, but that was for civil rights. Mm-hmm. And that was what? What year was that? That was. I was I mean, like you know? I was like sixteen years old. So if you're sixteen and forty-seven, let me see. I got to do them. <laughs> Fifty-seven, sixty. We went a whole crowd. Like in '63. Yeah, '63. And it was the Civil Rights March. Mm-hmm. Because um, was that with Titi Pat or no? That wasn't with Titi Pat. No, that no. Was this was that. This used to be with um, a neighborhood youth court that you would get your jobs mm-hmm. for forty dollars, and all everybody that used to work for mobilization for youth uh-huh. went on the march. The, was that a church thing or was just no, to get you a job? No, this was a city thing, uh, like an agency to that keep they kids would, out of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> And you get thirty-eight dollars with everything after taxes. Oh, okay. And did the, the, I mean, because growing up at that time, I mean, people must have been, you know, the the people dodging the war and the, the hippies and the smoking the pot or whatever. A lot of smoking. I never did it, but there was a lot of smoking. <laughs> a lot of people with crazy hair. You used to wear the bell-bottom jeans. And the... I used to wear the bell-bottom jeans, and my hair was very long, very very long. Because I think I seen a picture of you that you were leaning on a, on a Volkswagen, and I was, it looked like it was taken down by the Baruch project. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that was were you just leave, that was somebody's car, like you didn't know the person. Who, you were just sitting up. You were just happened to be yes. sitting on that car. Yeah, sitting on that. Okay, car. so there's no one's car that you know. No. And uh, when you said, because you once again you were telling me the story about like how you how you met Dad, there was you said that uh, that Grandpa was. He was a my, concert promoter? Or? No, no, no. He used to work... Uh, he used to... American Legions. Mm-hmm. He used to be the head of American Legions. Mm-hmm. And to make funds, they used to have parties. Mm-hmm. So uh, my sister and myself, we, my father wanted us to sell tickets. Mm-hmm. So I sold a, a ticket to this person. And this person says, I need like 20 tickets. Because mm-hmm. my friend... At that time, the tickets were like five dollars mm-hmm. to go in and so I, um he gave me the money and and they all came from the bronx mm-hmm. 138th street your father was younger he was 16 years old we thought he was 18 because he and, said he, he said he was 18 yes right? okay. and he came to the party with with chicky frank barzan a whole bunch of guys that, that, that I don't remember their names right now. And that's how you met Dad, dude. You sold tickets yes, to his friend. Yes, yeah, he was very shy. He uh-huh. was just standing there, sitting there. And I said, don't you dance? <laughs> he says, not really. But then I took him out to dance, and we danced. And, that's and he wasn't a good dancer? Not really. Not <laughs> a, he was more uh, a, a white boy. He was like a white boy. Even, yeah. though, his, even though his parents were from Puerto Rico also. Uh, yes, uh, uh, he was not, not into salsa. He was not into Puerto Rican food. His favorite food was a steak sandwich that his father made. Mm. He was not into rice and beans and chuletas and all that stuff. And the chuleta, for, the, for the people that rice and chuletas is a pork chop. Pork chops. <laughs> and, uh, and the penil. He didn't, you know, nothing like that they cooked in his house. Now, when you were, I mean, around this time, because you said you were working, you worked at Gouverneur Hospital. Was that at 16 or... No, I started. I started going to a hospital. I was like in my twenties. Okay, because were you? Was that by the when you met Dad? Were you already working at Gouverneur? Yes. 
Because, you know, for the people, you know, the when people. I met your father, I met him June twenty third, nineteen sixty nine. I met your father, and the dance, his, but his it was birthday. No, yeah, yeah. June twenty third, sixty nine. Okay, that's when I met him. It was his birthday. We went to some kind of party or something. So he was still in high school. I didn't know he was. On, I thought he told me he went to college. Mm -hmm. It's only two years different, but he makes it a big deal. You know? <laughs> Oh, and then, I went, oh, and we went, and I went to his prom for um, Cardinal Hayes. Cardinal Hayes, that was in the Bronx. Yeah. That he graduated, I was, I went to his prom. So, I mean, but that, so basically, Dad went to Catholic school. You went to public school, mm -hmm. but he was more like a white boy, like a uh, that, yeah, very straight lace. Straight lace, still the same. At sixty six, he's still the same. <laughs> He doesn't want to, he said, I guess, I don't know. He doesn't practice. I think he's embarrassed to say he is Hispanic. I think it's just, you know, people know automatically because he's so pale or whatever that, you know, since he doesn't look like a Puerto Rican or what people people in their mind consider what a Puerto Rican I mean, looks he, like. He speaks good Spanish because mm -hmm. he, he speaks good Spanish, but he doesn't, maybe once in a while he practices like when he was working. Mm -hmm. So, but now you worked in Gouverneur Hospital. The, that was like that's Sugasa. Now what they call it Sugasa is for uh, addicts that want to get cured. Mm -hmm. So that's they claim that they were going to knock it down. Yeah, because when I was growing up, when I was growing up, the old Gouverneur building was was dangerous and it was falling apart. And but well, in Gouverneur Hospital, because the the we work in the satellite of mm -hmm. the Gouverneur. Because the hospital people did have babies there. Because my my three of my brothers were born there. At the one the, the one that's was considered old Gouverneur now. Yeah, but now they have it until for sick people. Now it's now it's called Sukasa. Your no, home. No, 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 no. It's not called Sukasa. It's a regular building for people that are have the virus and they don't have no family, so they get a little room there. No, it's, this is that's what it is now. The hospital, the hospital, Gouverneur Hospital. Oh, Gouverneur Hospital now. Yes, they made it into that kind of you know building. But you're saying that, that and then around the side they made like a little off a building, and that was Gouverneur Hospital. Okay. That's where I started working in 1969. The one that's on Madison Street. No, it's I thought not on saying, I thought you not, worked on the one on Water Street. No, I were I started working in the one by Water Street. Uh -huh. And back then it was a real hospital. Well, the real hospital was the next door, the Gouverneur. This was like a pro. Uh, if you wanted, if you wanted to take your child to a, the pediatrician, like dental, a clinic? yeah, like the a part of the uh, Gouverneur uh, Hospital. And when you, were you, when you worked there, you were a cashier. Were you always a cashier there, or? Well, I took a, uh, I took a nursing course, but they told me they only had openings for cashier. Mm -hmm. So then I said, you know, I, you want it, or you just? I said I'll take it because mm -hmm. I needed to work. Mm -hmm. so, so you took uh, nursing. You took nursing. Yes, class. I took. Oh yeah, I took two years of nursing in Brooklyn, and I did work with sick kids that had, uh, a, it's a Jewish sickness. Uh, Kimber, uh, tech sack, something like that. They used to, they used to die. The babies would not last long oh my God. in a pediatric war. And I, and I used to love it because the only thing I cry every day because the babies were there like maybe three days and then they die. It's a, it's a Jewish a, sickness. Yeah, in a Jewish hospital in Brooklyn. Do you remember the name? Or no? no, I don't remember. Yeah, that was, well, that was a long 40, time ago. And so, but, so when, the, so there was a job opening for cashier. No, no, I came because I was working on a Sunday, mm -hmm. and it, it was during the holidays, so all the, you know, everybody that worked there, because I used to do their beds, I was like 80 pounds, mm -hmm. 89 pounds, <laughs> and I used to make their beds, and to, you know, be nice, make sure that, the, that I could bathe them and everything. And everybody was good to me, so for Christmas, everybody gave me an envelope. Mm -hmm. And the head nurse got very upset with me, and she was nasty and everything. So I said, I just went home, and I never went back. I sent a letter, mm -hmm. because she thought she told me she thought I was the, I was better than this. Because I was good to my patients, you know, I like mm -hmm. treated them like if they was my parents. Mm -hmm. And so, 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 people were giving you envelopes for the holiday. Yeah. That she gave, she couldn't manage. Yeah, you're not supposed to take the money. You don't deserve it. Or share it. I'm not gonna share no money with you. You didn't. <laughs> you didn't clean the person's butt. <laughs> I cleaned the person's bed. You know. 
And that was that was at Old Gouverneur? No, no, no that, that was, was in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Okay. And then from Brooklyn, I really wanted to be a operator, a switch operator for the telephone company because everybody had, everybody I knew worked for the telephone company on 14th Street. Mm-hmm. You know, and and I apply, and then I apply for Gouverneur, and mm-hmm. they call me from Gouverneur. And my father says, what's the sense of you spending 30 cents to go to work when you could walk to work, come home for lunch, and mm-hmm. you don't pay anything? And we were, you know, because we had to help the family, so I stood with Gouverneur. But this is still in Baruch. This is still so in Baruch. So you used Baruch. to walk from Baruch to, to Old Gouverneur. Yeah, it wasn't that far. It was, uh, you know, at that time I was young, and, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I worked in Gouverneur. And then they started building the old, we, then we went to Washington again for the rally of the new hospital because they didn't want the hospital. Mm-hmm. Oh my, I'm trying to think of the guy that ran the, the thing. He was very famous in the Low East Side. Jose Morales okay. planned the whole thing. He was very, for the people, mm-hmm. for the people in, in, in the Low East Side. And we went to another rally in, PR, in Washington, D.C. Mm-hmm. Now, when like it's, for some reason that just pops in my head because with, with with Uncle um, Uncle Abby and Uncle Ness and they used to I always used to see them with the the, the Pedro Alviso Campos that that if I if I understand my my history correct that he wanted Puerto Rico to become its own country and not be part of the United States. Did you ever did you have anything did did did, did you know people who did it? Did you go to any rally? Well, did you... well, my father wanted uh, Puerto Rico to be free, like, you know, but I was against it because of, you know, because mm-hmm. we're part of, you know. It was a part of the United States. It was part of the United States, and it was a lot of things. But my grandfather was really a fighter, but, you know. Fighter to, for Puerto Rico to be by itself? To be, or to... to be by itself. Oh, okay. Because. My grandparents, my uncles. They was they were stripped and wanting Puerto yeah. Rico to be. I said if it's free, it's gonna be hard. But there was, once again, uh, hopefully I'm not I'm not mistaken, but in Vieques, which is a little island off of Puerto Rico. Yeah, we went to Vieques. Yeah, it's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful because I heard that they were like that they were Vieques, testing they the bombs the, and stuff like that. And Vieques, they had the military. The military base. The military base. But, but they, was, but I heard, but I mean, once again, I mean, I'm a kid. I don't, you know. That that what I what I heard is that they were using the island to test bombs, like they would just they would bomb the hell out of it. Yeah, but then true. but they would but you where you went it was nice or the the island. Yeah, I mean they had the they had the soldiers and everything, but when we went we didn't have no problem. Oh, okay. Now when you because growing up growing up in the Lower East Side, did you go back to Puerto Rico at all? Like as a I vacation? Went, I, like I went to Puerto Rico. With my cousin uh, Gilbert used to come from PR all mm-hmm. the time. He was a teacher in PR, but he used to love New York, and he was dying to work in the school. But you know, his English wasn't that great. But he was a very intelligent, you know, young man. And, mm-hmm. and we used to go to like his parents was my godparents, mm-hmm. so my father would trust us to go there. Mm-hmm. But my cousins would take us all over. <laughs> go out and party. Yeah, we used to go to parties. We used to do everything. It was nice. Now, when you were on the TV, because I know you grew up like watching like Honeymooners and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah, the was it? Was it? I love Lucy. I love Lucy. Was there? Was there Spanish TV at all? Or no? No, at that time, I don't remember any Spanish. But mm-hmm. what was it on the radio? On the radio, you listen on everything, the music and everything, the radio, not the TV. Well, how many? Like, was there one station, two stations, Maybe five stations? I, I think they had like three stations. I think on AM. <laughs> yeah. You had to look for AM real good because, you know, for the mm-hmm. AM. Now, when you started, because when, when you met Dad, he came all the way down from the Bronx. Did you go up to the Bronx a lot, or did did, did or, No, or I did. He, uh, he came I, from I, the Bronx I, down to Lower East Side, or did you go from Lower East Side uh, to the Well, he, your father used to come a lot to to, to the Lower East Side because, like I said, my father was, it, it was always a party. Mm-hmm. So they used to come, you know, he used to, and all the guys used to come, and, you know. But I mean, when you were dating, when you were dating, like the dad. Yeah, he picked me up in the um, in the bus. Yeah. He would take the bus to, to to. He would take the train and the bus, the Cocoa Pop train that used to stop on Forty Nine Street. The Cocoa Pop train. Yeah, they used to call it a co- and then from the Cocoa Pop train from from your father's stop, it would stop on One Hundred Forty Nine Street. Then you had to go downstairs and take the train to Fourteenth Street. Oh, so he took a bus, a train, and then another bus. Yeah. Oh, okay. And there was now. Did you go up? Did you go up to the Bronx? Yeah, we went to the Bronx. I met his his parents. 
but when you went to the Bronx, you went to the Bronx by yourself. I mean, I know it's a different time. No, no, I went. I went with my friends because the guys wanted to meet friends. Okay. So I used to go with my friends. <laughs> We used to take a, any empty box, put whatever inside, and make it into a gift. And then we told my mother we were going to a birthday party. There was nothing in the box. We used to make it whatever. <laughs> and we would wrap it up, get a card and everything, and we would go to the party. <laughs> and so, I mean, did you, go to, did you go to Yankee games? Did you? No? No. I mean, did you, did you drag that out to any part, the other dance places? Or yeah. Anything? You used to drag them a lot. <laughs> I, yes, and one day uh, I was going to a party and he came to visit me. Mm -hmm. And I told him, You want to go to the party? And he said, No, I don't want to go. So I said, Okay, bye. He stood with my family and I went to the party. So you left them, you left them watching TV in the living room and you said bye and he just. He... And I went to the party. <laughs> And you said that, okay, with all the brothers and sisters that, that, you know, you were surprised that your parents kept food in the house mm -hmm. and kept the house clean and everything like that. Immaculate. But you said that your brothers used to tease dad about the food in the refrigerator. I mean, because, you know, we used to have donuts because daddy used to make donuts, bread pudding. I mean, you remember, your, br your brother used to act so, your father used to act so white. Mm -hmm. So, you know, oh, I don't eat that because he was used to just sandwiches. Mm hmm so uh, my brother Georgie would say, hey, Bob, you want a roast beef sandwich? <laughs> and he would say, yes, but there was no roast beef sandwich. <laughs> you want a piece of pie, lemon moran pie? <laughs> and there was no, and there they was, were just teasing him. No, yeah, they were teasing him. Because, I mean, because you had, you know, what, six, seven brothers. Or wait, six whatever. brothers. Six All brothers. Right. And dad's coming to the house to visit you. And he's got six brothers that are busting his chops. Like, yeah. people get mad. People get scared with just one brother. And he had six brothers oh, busting his chops. To, they used to tease the hell out of him. <laughs> and I had to have an escort. If Ludie didn't go, Abby had to go, or Nelson had to go. If we went to the Bronx. So if you went to the Bronx, then you would bring I had to your take brothers Abby, with, yeah, Abby or Ludie or... I used to take Eileen as a little girl. Mm -hmm. She was like two years old, three uh -huh. years old. And so, like, basically, like a spy. They make it for you. Yeah, don't get Abby was the best spy because as soon as we, your father only could take me to White Castles. Mm -hmm. Remember, he was not in college. Mm -hmm. He was faking it that he was in college. So he said, "No, oh, you want White Castles?" And then Abby would open his eyes. I want White Castles. <laughs> Because Abby would be, Abby would pretend to be asleep in the car. In, in the, the car, backseat. yeah. If I had a little jalopy. Mm. Mm -hmm. And you used to go, and but you, so you were having White Castles back in. Oh my God. So it was like the early seventies, late nineties, eight sixties. Yeah. And so um, there was um, so you worked so you know, when you so Gouverneur. When did Gouverneur switch over from the old building to the new building? In Gouverneur 19, Hospital. In nineteen seventy one. Oh, okay, that long. Mm -hmm. Because when I was growing up. The old Gouverneur building, which at that time was across the street from where, where we lived, it was beat up and, and falling apart. And, uh, and I'm not going to lie, I snuck in there with my friends. We used to hang out and, you know, just to explore or whatever. And we could have fucking died in there. <laughs> yeah, but they fixed it, like I tell you. Oh, now it's gorgeous, yeah. Yeah, they fixed it. And, and then they had a, the methadone program was in Delancey Street with Dr. Freeman. She wanted me to go work with her, but I... Was afraid, but it was the same benefits and everything. The only thing you had to deal with a lot of, and some of them were nice, but some of them were real nasty. Mm -hmm. And also, I did it for two months, and then I, I, I went. I said, I want to go back to cashiering. <laughs> and it was a problem. People all twisted and everything. I, I mean, I'm talking about you don't want to be there. And when, it, when, now when you, because Dad, he ended up going to, 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 you know, he went to John Jay for college, and then he went out to farming there all the way out in Long Island. Mm -hmm. So at that point, I was, I got, I don't know the math. So when Dad, you were already married with? No, when Dad, no, we weren't no. Married, no. But Dad used to go from, but Dad lived out in Farmingdale, right? I mean, yeah, he lived in Farmingdale. He did his thing. That was thing. a SUNY I, at Farmingdale, I State called, University yeah, of New York. Yeah, he claimed that he used to work for, you know, so he could, they could pay his, for his room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he had his little he had his little girls down there. That's why I went once, and he was so angry at me. He put me right back in the train. Like a surprise, you uh, showed up. Yeah, or? surprise. What are you doing here? Right here? Uh, I don't want nobody to see you. Uh. <laughs> he went crazy and put me in the train back to New York. And so, but so after Dad graduated, you guys got married, and then you moved up to the Bronx. Mm -hmm. Do you, you remember the address? Or? It was thirteen twenty six. West 138th Street. Oh, okay. So that's like, that's a big and area. The, yeah. 
We got a beautiful one bedroom apartment for one hundred and thirty eight dollars. Mm-hmm. And that was just an apartment. It wasn't like a co op or anything. No, it like was that. an apartment. Your father worked for Sentry. It was the Sentry a, armored car. Yes, he worked for Sentry, and then Sentry started. Uh, they they hired Sentry for the check cash. Mm-hmm. So he used to bring the money there too. You know, mm-hmm. the, to the check cashing. To place. the check cash, yeah. Which is then he eventually started yeah, working at the so check cash. So then I used to live and I had to take two tra- two buses and a train to get to Gouverneur with a belly. You were pregnant with, with your brother. My my older brother. The older brother. So then I I didn't know that uh, the co-op you 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 just applied. I applied. They called me. But was, I, Gra- was Grandpa already living in the co-op? No, Grandpa was in PR. Oh, he went back to PR. Yeah, Grandpa went to PR when I got married. A month later, Grandpa went back to PR, and they bought a a, a beautiful house in Puerto Rico and Bayamón. Mm-hmm. They bought a beautiful house and everything, but things didn't work out because Grandpa was always sick, you know, with a problem with his pancreas. Mm-hmm. And the BA hospital there suck, he mm-hmm. said. So, well, anyway, so then I applied for Governor Gardens. They told me they had a 13th floor and the 6th floor. And I had to have, at that time, $3,000. Mm-hmm. So thanks to my friend Barbara Diaz, that's why... I- she told me, Liz, let's make a loan. Come, I'll take. You, I'll show you how to, you could go and get a loan. Mm-hmm. And how'd you know Barbara? I met Barbara because she used to work with in us with us in Gouverneur. In Gouverneur. Mm-hmm. So we made the loan because I already got the apartment. Your father says I'm staying in the Bronx. But then when he found out that he was gonna bring money to to the check cashing, and I don't live too far from there, you know, and then he decided to move. Because when you when you were living in the Bronx, you you know you had Robert, my brother, and and. You had, I, a, you had a little chihuahua? Yeah, my little chihuahua. What was the dog's name? Pancho Villa. Pancho Pan- Villa. <laughs> yeah, I sent him, he went to PR. I sent him to my father, Pancho Villa. <laughs> because your brother had a a, a a little chihuahua. She was mixed with something, your father. Uh, and they used to call her Rosie. Mm-hmm. It was a female what uh, mutt. Mm. And your father was homesick. He missed Rosie. Mm. So I wanted to surprise him. And I went to the pet shop. Mm. And I got him back. Pancho, Pancho Villa. <laughs> and uh, so then, so Robert was already born when you, no, was Robert born when you got to the to Lower East Side or no? Robert was born in the Bronx. Because no, Robert was no, born no, in the Bronx. No, 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 Bob was born, I can't, yeah, Bob was born in the Bronx. Because I remember I said, I got pains, I got pains. You sure, you sure? Because your father used to work nights. He came tired from work. And I says, if you don't take me to the doctor, I'm going to call my sister, because my sister used to live in the Bronx, too. Mm-hmm. So, and I was, you know, my first baby, I went private with Dr. August. i never forget him. He was a good doctor. Mm-hmm. And one day, he took me to Bed Israel, because your brother was born in Bed Israel. He examined me, and he told Bob, the baby's coming. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the following, a couple of hours later, not a couple of hours, uh, I went, in, like, in the middle of the night, mm-hmm. and that following day, at 11.55, your brother was born in the morning. 11.55 in the morning. Mm-hmm. Is it, uh, like, okay, so let me, all right, so then, so then, but then, so you were with Robert up in, up in the Bronx, and then you moved down to the Lower East Side. I moved, I moved to the Lower East Side when Bob was um, 11 months old. Oh, okay. That so I celebrated his first birthday in, in where I live now. Mm-hmm. And then you used to, um, I mean, we used to, I mean, I know Robert had pictures of, like, celebrating his birthday at McDonald's and stuff oh, like that. Oh, forget it. The father wanted the whole, we used to rent the bottom, because before you could rent, like, the bottom of McDonald's and... It was the one on 14th Street, right? Or yeah, no? yeah, there was one on 14th Street, and honey, yeah, I invited, everybody, I, I invited his family, and everybody was ordering Big Macs and, <laughs> <laughs> and milk, ice cream shakes and all that stuff. <laughs> But it, you know, and with the, was that that wasn't included, right? Or was that no? You had to you had to pay for everything. <laughs> they, you know, they That's give you like a like a thing. Like if you're gonna have twenty kids, they get the little happy meal. But then the adults, they started ordering the Big Mac, the French fries. <laughs> There's my brothers, you know. Uh-huh. It was all family, and he had it. Oh, look at the bill! Look at the bill! Two hundred and something dollars. <laughs> And now, like, because growing up, because you, you grow, growing up in Baruch, and then you moved to what basically the area that's called the Hill, but then like neighborhood politics, you know, there was also the the place called the Ave, the, you know, the Avenue, the Avenue, Alphabet City. Uh-huh. Was there, like, when I was growing up, even though I never really saw it, there was always people like, well, if you're from the Hill, you don't like people from the Avenue. If you don't like people from the Avenue, you know, then you well, don't like I people from to, uh... Smith Projects and... 
Was there any kind of politics no, the like pe- that? The people in for- uh, Baruch, because we were the... Because you were in the middle. <laughs> uh, Baruch is right in the middle between... Yeah, and we used to go to Avenue G. You know, we used to hang out in Avenue G to get our, our slice of pizza and a, and a cup of Coke for 15 cents. Mm-hmm. For 15 and cents, a slice of pizza and a, a, slice and of a pizza cup of Coke? And of a small cup of Coke. <laughs> 15 cents. <laughs> And that was the same. Was that like this? Was it like ten cents to bid on the on the subway or fifteen cents? Fifteen cents. Again. It was always a little always say tiny that little token like this. The the cost. The, usually they say the cost of a token is always the same price as a slice of pizza. And when we went city. shopping with my father to the bodega, everybody, the nine of us, everybody walked out with a shopping bag. Oh, okay. <laughs> so grandpa was working at the. Uh, no wait, I don't, because I thought Grandpa worked at a factory. Oh no, 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 he worked. Oh, at, right. He worked in that bake and the, the, where they made the bread and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then he used to get himself. Uh, Grandpa used to sew, mm-hmm. and Grandpa used to make a lot of money because everybody wanted the plastic covers mm-hmm. in the building. The plastic covers on the furniture and the furniture. So Daddy would give them like a you pay whatever this week. You don't you pay it slowly. Mm-hmm. Some people couldn't afford it, mm-hmm. so Daddy used to go measure and make the plastic. The cover so he made his little that's why i started sewing because he I, he used to make me help him so he you had the the sewing machine in the house yeah factory machine a factory machine yes how the hell how the hell did you get it <laughs> like well we had it in the in, in one of the rooms and daddy used to sew sometimes in the living room and that thing must have been loud <laughs> well daddy used to do it a lot <laughs> remember we live on the ground floor Oh, okay, so you're so not bothering, were, uh, you're not and, bothering the neighbors downstairs. And Kuka Pacheco was our neighbor that her father used to be a, he used to sing, and he had his own band, mm-hmm. but they were always alone, so. So they weren't bothering anybody. They weren't bothering, they were having their own parties and stuff, so. <laughs> now when you, uh, so when you moved to the Lower East Side, now you're, you're walking distance from work, you never, had to, you never had to take the train or anything like that, because yeah. um, when you used to, because right there on, on, uh, Oh my God! I can't believe I'm I'm forgetting the name of the street where Pathmark was. But before Pathmark opened, where you used to go shopping for food. I mean, I know because I know we used to go up to the Bronx to the Pathmark up in the Bronx. But that was that's I was already born by that time. When when Pathmark. Oh no, there was Red Apple, right? It was, it was no, it's it was Fine Fair has been there forever. Oh, okay. They had two Fine Fairs and the Co-op Auditorium where I got married. Uh-huh. There's a Fine Fair and there's one right there by the post office. Oh, okay. And Madison's whatever. I, what I was the one that was behind the building? I could have sworn it was a red apple. It was um, food something, food food fair or food something that they oh. closed it. Oh, okay. So they had a lot of they used to sell a lot of rotten stuff. Oh. <laughs> but they have it in they have it like a storage for the Chinese. They they store a lot of stuff in there. Mm-hmm. And so being on the Lower East Side and and you know, but you were. Cause you now, so you you moved to you moved to where you lived before Grandpa. I thought you moved there after Grandpa. I moved there before Grandpa. Oh, okay. And then then Grandpa moved in across well, the street. Well, Grandpa, no, Grandpa left me his. You know, he left some money in the bank, mm-hmm. and he wanted because he got sick, mm-hmm. and he wanted to come back to New York. So he left some money in the bank. I was the only one that knew, mm-hmm. and he told me, please, you know, do the application. I think your father will fill out the application, mm-hmm. and I gave it into Google. Near Gardens in less than three weeks. I'm talking about a long time ago. Mm. They call us. There was an apartment in 3F, and we took the apartment as it was a wreck. Mm. So you know, my brothers, they took. We painted. Mm. My brothers painted. We got linoleum because that was the thing that on those days, mm. you know. Daddy told me go to Sears, get a. He had an account there. Get the refrigerator. Get the you know. So when they came, everything was set. And then, so a couple of years after Robert was born, then you had me, mm-hmm. your loving son, my baby. Yes. <laughs> now is it? And and you know, I know you said you don't want to talk about anything negative. Is it true that I wasn't supposed to be born? Is it uh, that it was like a? a there wasn't. I wasn't a surprise or a mistake or something like that. No. Oh, okay. No, no. It just happened. <laughs> you weren't. You weren't expecting it. I wasn't expecting you, but I wanted another baby. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was looking for that little girl. And another <laughs> little boy came. There you go. So, but but now that you now that I have a little girl, now you finally have a chance to to uh, yeah to have the little girl you never had because you grew up with. Six, seven brothers and, and three two. sisters, and none of the well, you know. And then with your sisters, like 
Cause None of them had girls. They have granddaughters, but they don't have daughters. Because Titi Evelyn, mm-hmm. she was in the Air Force? My sister was in the Air Force, yes. And then you had... Remember the World's Fair? Do mm-hmm. you... Or, no, yeah, I don't I mean, you, I, I was... You no, but I mean, I'm, 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 I know what it was. You remember the World's Fair? I went, with my, I went with my sister. She looked so beautiful with her the, Air Force uniform. uniform. She was like a Twiggy. We went. They took us all over. We saw the, the future... Oh, the world. Uh, yeah, they put you in this thing, and you see the how the future's gonna be, and all that. It was mm-hmm. beautiful. And then you had, then your brothers, your brothers served in the Marines. Then my brother Jose joined the Marines. Then Georgie followed him, and then Tony followed him. Uh-huh. All Marines. My brother went to Vietnam. Then the Vietnam War, which they claim is only one child could fight the war. Mm-hmm. They put my brother Georgie and my brother Jose in Vietnam. In Vietnam fighting. Then I remember the the we were gonna go see. I think we were gonna see that movie where the boys are. Uh-huh. And they came. This police officer, uh, this uh, sergeant came or whatever from the military, whatever they call them. And told mommy and told my parents that my brother was missing. My mother went crazy. Missing in action. Missing in action. Then I don't know how long, months later, I don't know how many months later, they found my brother. Mm, so. And they came with the walkie-talkie that you say over. Uh-huh. And they, my mother heard my brother's voice and stuff like that. All the way from Vietnam? Yeah. Wow. They had like a walkie-talkie, I say, over. Uh And and they came with it, and they found my brother, but my brother wasn't well. But my brother got the Purple Heart for saving his platoon. They made a big thing for my brother, saving his platoon. Which which, which brother? My brother, Jose. Oh, okay, Jose. Jose. He got every medal you could name of in the the, the Marines. So you had brothers that were Marines in in Vietnam. My brothers were all Marines, except for Uncle... No, 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 they all... Daddy was... Army. My sister was in the Air Force, and, and Jose, Tony, and Nelson, and Tito were Marines. And and then uh, you know, talking about recently, Uncle Georgie, Miguel Langha, Miguel, Miguel, he's, Miguel, he's the, he's Miguel Junior. Miguel Junior, yeah. His son, Miguel the Third, which I always grew up calling him Ely because that was his nickname. Yeah, I mean, his name was the, at the, he was Miguel the Third, but we all call him Ely. And he, so Ely was serving, and there was a in Iraq. Imp- improvised explosive device that because they were un- they had to go to the buildings to see there was nobody there. They were clearing, and, and they put like a bomb, and he just yeah. As soon as they walked in or whatever that mm-hmm. thing, so so you know, so Uncle Uncle Joe had a Purple Heart, and then Ely, unfortunately, he got a Purple Heart, but he got it because he he was killed. He was killed in action. He was killed in action, and. Uh, so, so we have a lot of family that, sell, that, that, that served in the military, mm-hmm. grandpa, three generations. My uncles from my mother's side, too, they were, except for Uncle Ernie and Uncle Manolo, Uncle Mickey, and Uncle Tony were in the army. No, did they, did they, did they go to World War II or, or, because the, the brothers, no, you said, oh, your uncles, which were grandma's brothers? Yeah. Oh, okay. Two of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The two younger ones. Mm-hmm. And they were... They uh, were my uncle, Tony's a Louis Special from the military. <laughs> so a Louis Special is someone that's yeah, he's, crazy. Yeah, crazy. Because <laughs> people he, don't know what the hell he is. He is really, special. you know, he's really crazy. Mm-hmm. Now, when you, got, when you got to the Louis side, I mean, were you always involved in St. Mary's or... No, A Lady of Sorrows. That's where I made my first communion, my confirmation, and I got married. Oh, okay. To your father, A Lady of Sorrows. It was, it was always in the same place on Pitt Street. It's always on Pitt Street. Beautiful church. And then they got a school next door, right? Yeah, then my brothers, uh, my sister, my younger sister, and Abby and Nelson went to the school of Our Lady of Sorrows. Oh, okay. Catholic school. So to be yeah, so, Grandpa's putting four kids through Catholic school. Yeah, but the more you had, the less you pay. Yeah, per per, per, per student. Because they had, you know. And then, so so, what happened? How did you end up leaving Our Lady of Sorrows and then going to St. Mary's? I mean, because we moved to the Bronx. When I got married, I moved to the Bronx. Oh, okay. And then, uh, so when we came back, I was too late to, you know, it was like further Our Lady of Sorrows, so we started going to. St. Mary's. Mm-hmm. And so now, like, you've been, so, because if you left, you and you, because Robert was born in 73, but towards the end of 73, so if you moved on, on like, his 11th month birthday or whatever, uh-huh. his 11 month, yeah, whatever birthday, that was 74, so you've been in the same apartment since 1974. 39 years. And you're not going anywhere. 
I'm going to Rock De uh, Rosedale or... Rosedale Rose Cemetery? <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm going. I won't leave my covey for nothing. Yeah, because you've been... Because uh, we're recording this in uh, January 2014, and, and right this past this past week, the uh, past two weeks that you've been up here has been the coldest weather and on record, and, and every day it's been 17 degrees outside. We've had tons of snow, and actually, uh, actually the snow was actually blown away like actually right now where it's the coldest it, there's like no snow on the ground because the wind is blowing it you know the midwest is like the whole country has the lowest temperatures right now so you're not you wouldn't you wouldn't come to rochester if, if someone paid you you better believe it. <laughs> you will you love your dirty apple i love my dirty apple i come to rochester for that my princess and for you too but you but want to my, visit your I'll go anywhere where my princess goes. Mm -hmm. So now you got. So you finally got the little girl. Yes. You finally got the little girl you always wanted after two snot, uh, snot nosed boys. <laughs> and then you waited so long, seven years. And then uh, yeah, and then well, you got and because you got you also have two nephews. You have uh, two uh, god. Uh, excuse me, grandsons. Well, yeah, to I got meet my, the nephews. I'm my, sorry. I have my grandson Robert the third, handsome kid. He's in the ninth grade. Very bright. God bless him. And I have my comedian, which I love. I love them both, but my comedian, Andrew. Mm -hmm. Andrew is a comedian, very bright. Well, oh, he he's a loving kid. And and, and Robert the uh, Third, I'm so used to just calling him Bubba. That was his nickname. Like, he's already, at 14 years old, he's almost taller than his father. Oh, he's a 10 and shoot. A 10. <laughs> he's got a mustache. He has mustache, <laughs> beards. Very handsome guy. They're both <laughs> handsome. Mm -hmm. Bubba is going to be very tall. Mm -hmm, so. <laughs> pretty soon he'll be taller than his father. <laughs> you know, very less bright. Than about a year or so. Yeah. And so, all right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up because I got stuff I got to take care of. And and thank you for I I kind of just dropped this on you at the last minute to you know come on do my show and stuff. And like I get that. nervous. I get tongue tied. So this is this is on the computer. <laughs> but you don't because you don't know anything about computers, right? You don't. But okay. I'm just saying is that like 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 when I talk about like Facebook and stuff like that, you you look I at work, it. I work with computers and gouverneur, but nothing about look Facebook and nothing. <laughs> no, no. They used to play games. My friends used to play games with the computers, but I, I always did my work. I didn't have time for that. Yeah, because you had because you did 33, 33 years with the city. Th Thirty five. Thirty five years, and it was it was technically health and hospitals, but it was under it was under the city's wing. Or under it was the city's affiliated. Pension, or? It was affiliated with Beth Israel. Uh -huh. Now it's affiliated with Bellevue Hospital. Mm -hmm. So now we got doctors from Bellevue to come to Gouverneur. Uh -huh. So that's and then so. Uh, and if you're gonna have surgery, so you did your thirty five years for the city. Mm -hmm. You got your pension, and you're just tier one like the police office. And you just get, now it's time for you to kick back and... and That's and, right. Thank God I got my <laughs> pension or else I'll be working in Slum 90. <laughs> All right. So um, I think that's it. I'm, I'm not going to bother you anymore. Um, so uh, we'd like to thank everybody for listening and, and coming this far, uh, going down memory lane and, and their, you know, a little firsthand history. So uh, thank you for listening to Two Strangers, One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Liz. <laughs> And I'm Lala, oh, Lala, but my name is really Elizabeth. <laughs> Don't be a stranger. Bye. Hey, here we go, man. Go ahead. You want to read Double it? Jackpot. What is it? It is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris Cologne? Smells good to me. But <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. I broke that fucking cold little exterior. He's like, hee hee. But it is spelled C-O-L-O-N. I'm punny. But... <laughs> <laughs> Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with oh, a materialist, I feel you, Eric. Lynette. I, 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 oh, fucking. Are you oh, sure man. I didn't write this? Uh, I, I smell, sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively, su sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Oh, I, I gotta meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. All right. Both Lynette and uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in lotto history, much like the recent Powerball. Both girls play his birth date as the winning re as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women, 
Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Is. Look at her. Fucking, she's impressed. I am. Summer, she got some summer reading. Uh, Christopher uh, Cologne smells real lovely with an original idea. This is. I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like, hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. <laughs> this is way more original than Clerks. This is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think it is? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books Heavy Metal Video Games Trilogy Book 2. Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show. I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Welcome, motherfucker, up! Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be honest with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. (laughs) Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. I want to run it past him, man. I want to, and if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. I get a a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. That's lulu.com. I understand that. I just wanted to spell it out. (laughs) (laughs) Normally one says it, that spells it. Still, lulu.com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. Search for Double Jackpot Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is $15.00. And a PDF file is only five bucks. Five dollars yeah. is insanely inexpensive. Fifteen is not even that bad for a hard, for a paperback version. No. This is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on. Come I, like I can it. see that trailer. Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm going to make that smelly joke. I know. You're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. (laughs) Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information. Chris Cologne, like a motherfucker. I will totally read this. Double Jackpot. I'm serious. I'm going to recommend that to fucking Raskin. How is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R-rated version. There could be nudie in it. And you could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex sells. <laughs> Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out two strangers one podcast.net, your one stop resource for everything show related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on two strangers one podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You're cool. And fuck you, I'm out.